Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to review the Range Experts Insane Gain Long Range VHF UHF Outdoor Antenna. It's a fairly affordable long range antenna that claims a 100 mile range. How well does it actually work? Stay tuned to find out. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So I had a few requests to review this Range Experts antenna model. My first impression of this company was sort of mixed. After all, I never heard of the top-notch antennas Range Expert brand and sort of put them in the category of unknown generic brands from China, which turned out to be the complete opposite of what this company is. They're actually a US veteran owned company. The website was extremely informative with a demonstration of the UHF only version of this antenna from a guy who actually looks like he knows what he's talking about. The website also had an assembly instructional video and information on why many antennas with long mileage claims are bogus. What also really impressed me about this company was the confirmation email after I purchased this antenna. It suggested a signal booster, but clearly explained they're only beneficial with a very long cable run or if connecting multiple TV sets. Most companies would just hype up the signal booster in order to sell it. What drew me to review this specific antenna model was what seems to be decent gain both on the VHF and UHF band, specifically several VHF elements. Many antennas out there skip out on VHF gain, which in my opinion is critical for some situations. Many VHF UHF combo antennas on the market, such as this model, are intentionally designed for UHF and high VHF, as low VHF was essentially phased out after the digital transition of 2009 for approximately 95% of the country. It should be noted that if you don't live near Philadelphia, regardless of the channel shown on your TV set, the station's real channel or real frequencies likely will not be on low VHF. There are only a few cities that have stations on a low VHF band, and even they're typically reserved to non-English or religious stations. If you're in one of the few areas with low VHF stations, such as Philadelphia, what's nice about this antenna model is that the company also built a very easy to add on low VHF mod that can be done right in the home. However, if you're not in the Philadelphia area, you'll likely want to leave the antenna in its default UHF VHF high configuration for maximum performance. Again, this can be a little confusing to some of you as it's still very common for TV stations to show channels two through six on your TV set, but in reality, the TV station might be actually broadcasting on a different RF channel. To find out what RF channels your local TV stations broadcast on, go to antennapoint.com type in your zip code, and you'll be provided with a list of TV stations in your area. Look at the DTV channel for each TV station. You can see in my area, the local NBC28 actually broadcasts on VHF channel 11. If you want to run a reception report to get a better idea of what TV stations can be picked up at your location, not just based solely on distance, check out the FCC DTV reception maps or rabbitears.info. I attach links to both websites in the description of the video. Outside of Philadelphia will typically be UHF and high VHF regardless of the channel shown on your TV set. So again, I wouldn't worry about the low VHF mod of this antenna unless you're in the Philadelphia market as it's extremely rare for other areas to have network stations on the low VHF band today. The company tells me that about 60 inches in length, this antenna model often performs similar to traditional style VHF, UHF antennas twice its size. Once you understand the differences between a Yagi and log periodic directional antenna design that traditional monster size antennas often use and the TV band changes, the reasons why will make sense. Although the traditional style antennas are quite large, they typically aren't true Yagi antenna designs, but rather use a hybrid log periodic wide design. The trade-off with log periodic antennas is lower gain for their size for a wider frequency design. A true Yagi design, such as this Range Experts antenna, packs in a lot more gain in a given area 
whereas a log periodic design requires much more size and more elements to have comparable gain of a true Yagi style antenna such as this range experts model. For those of you who want to learn more about the differences between a traditional Yagi and log periodic style antenna, I included some informational links in the description of the video. Another reason why this antenna can perform as well as traditional style antennas up to twice its size is many of the larger antennas waste a good bit of their space on the nearly extinct low VHF band. Whereas this model, all the elements out of the box are focused on UHF and high VHF frequencies, at least in a default configuration. Again, there is an optional low VHF modification, but in its default configuration, it focuses its design on the UHF and high VHF bands as very few areas will have low VHF frequencies today. If you do happen to live in an area with low VHF stations, such as Philadelphia, and reach out to the company, they'll send you a guide on which elements need to be swapped out for low VHF mod. The company says the mod requires no tools or additional parts and only takes a few minutes to perform. This model also improved its gain in a tighter space by adding many elements, not just lengthwise, but through two robust sets of corner reflectors. The first corner reflector set has eight oversized UHF reflector elements, which were strategically lengthened to also act as eight VHF director elements once the VHF component is installed. It also has a second corner reflector set at its rear with VHF reflector elements as well. As far as construction, the antenna was very easy to assemble and had a very solid build quality to it. This also really surprised me since the antenna was about half the cost of other long range models. I expected the build quality to take a hit, but it did not. So after all this technical information, how well does this antenna actually work? I tested it out in the same location I tested out various other outdoor antennas to see how it performs. Here are the results from the last two antennas I tested out on my YouTube channel. From left to right, you'll see the TV station, the call letters, RF channel the TV station broadcasts on, and the results of the previous two antennas I tested out on the YouTube channel. All of these TV stations are about 42 miles away with one mountain ridge between my home and the broadcast towers. You can also see the results of various other outdoor antenna models by checking out my other videos. The signal on KYW CBS3, which broadcasts on UHF channel 30, was higher on this antenna than the GE Attic antenna, and about the same as a much larger Weingart antenna. The signal on WCAU NBC10, which broadcasts on UHF channel 28, was significantly higher on this antenna than a small GE attic antenna and about the same as a much larger Weingart antenna. The signal on WPHL, which broadcasts on UHF channel 17, was, as you guessed it, significantly higher on this antenna than a small GE attic antenna and about the same as the much larger Weingard antenna. The signal on WTXF Fox 29, which broadcasts on UHF channel 31, was higher on this antenna than the last two antennas I tested out. The signal on WHYY, which broadcasts on VHF channel 13, was higher on this antenna than GE attic antenna, but a bit lower than the Weingard antenna. This is still pretty impressive, considering that it's half the size of the Weingart antenna. To be honest, I was not expecting this antenna to perform as well as it did. After all, I never heard of the company Top Notch Antennas or the Range Expert brand, plus the insane gain keyword made me think that the antenna was overly hyped up. The antenna turned out to perform very well both on the VHF and UHF band. It brought in a significantly higher signal level on the one VHF channel in my area than most antennas I reviewed on my YouTube channel. If all this technical information, low VHF, high VHF, and UHF, has you confused on what exactly to look for in an antenna for your area, consider an antenna recommendation from me on my website at antennamanpa.com. Thanks to Range Experts for sponsoring this video and giving me the opportunity to review their excellent antenna model. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. 
If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more antenna reviews, reception tips, and cord cutting information, and have an awesome day.